The budget we built out today is gonna to be a full year view broken out by month. We'll start out with January, end of December, and really the goal is to understand your money coming in, your money going out, any savings you have left over, and really kind of see the flow throughout the year. So to get this Excel sheet set up, you can hit into cell B2 and just type in Jan for January. Once you're done hitting tab, we'll head over to the cell to the right. And once you fill in from January to March, you can highlight those cells, click on this square in the bottom right hand corner, and then drag it over until you hit December. You can hit control B to bold, and then we can center align things and add some color to kind of pretty it up. So let's start out with income. This is gonna be your money coming in. Generally the biggest piece for anybody is gonna be their salary. On top of that, you might have a yearly bonus. And even further, you might have a side hustle, which we can call miscellaneous. And then we can leave one row blank just in case you have anything else that pops up as an income stream. But all this together, you can call total income. You can bold that and then create the formula using equal sum, hitting tab and then arrowing up to salary. Drag that formula across, and then we can add dollar signs to everything. This will condense the zeros right here. Bold this, and we're all set up to start. For this budget right here, the important thing to note is salary is the very bottom line of your paycheck. This is after 401k contributions, after any taxes, insurance, and things like that. Let's say each month you're seeing $5,000 into your bank account. Generally, depending on your job, this won't change. This will kind of be static until you get a raise or a different job and things like that. But for this example, we're assuming it's all the same. Let's say you get 2,500 each March. So we'll add that in as bonus. For the miscellaneous piece, it, it might be kind of sporadic, but you can kind of take an average for what you make each month. So maybe you do graphic design freelancing and make about $250 a month. So at this point, we have our total income set up, broken out by month. This you're seeing is pretty constant, essentially the same value each month which can change if you're anticipating a promotion or anything like that. But we'll just start with this basic setup structure. This next piece we're gonna look at investments. So these are contributions outside of your 401k or any employee sponsored match. This is your brokerage account or an IRA. So if you have any other contributions you're adding into the markets. So we can bold these headers and then if we wanna add some annotation, just highlight the cells you want and then do Alt H6. And then from there, total investments. And if you want to fix the indentation, do Alt H5. Similar to the above, we do equal sum. And then we can sum up together your brokerage and your IRA contributions by month. For the sake of the brokerage account, let's say you're contributing $300. And then your IRA, you're maxing out at 6K for the year. So you're contributing constant 500. If you know at the end of the year, maybe you're going to have money you're spending on gifts or you're going to spend more money, you can kind of pick and choose the amounts you want to put. For this, we can just say zero. Another tip you can add is full year view. So this can show your income and your investments that you're spending for the full year. So you can just click and drag that formula down, delete the cells you don't need. And then if you hit this format painter, you can take along any coloring, bolding, indentation, things like that. Now let's look at expenses. So there's fixed expenses and things like rent or if you have a car payment each month that you know, you know it's gonna be the same amount each month. There's also variable expenses which can fluctuate depending on the time of the year, depending on things that just pop up in life, but this section gets all of them combined together. So if we start out with rent or mortgage, this is generally a fixed expense. So let's say it's 1200 a month, and then maybe in September, you know, you're signing a new lease for 1350. Also for the structure of this report, we can drag down this full year formula. If you hit Control Alt V, and then tap F, that'll just bring down the formulas. And then we can add dollar signs again, just for some formatting things. So now we have our rent set up. The next piece is utilities. So you can think of gas or electric in your home, if you have air conditioning and things like that, and you can also include internet. And depending on how you wanna break out this budget, you can combine things together or just break them out. 
but for the sake of this, we can just combine them together. So utilities, you can consider it fixed. It's generally variable, of course. If you know in the summer months, you're gonna be spending more money, or you can estimate that you're gonna be spending more money on air conditioning, or in the winter months, you're gonna spend more on heat. You can add that in. Again, just fixing these formulas. So once you have rent and utilities, those are some of the big ones. You can also go into auto. If you have a $300 car payment, is sort of a fixed expense. Gas, maybe estimate at 100. And then if you wanna just add some buffer, it's always good to be conservative on these budgets. So we can, call, we can call it 450, and then what I like to do is add, just in case anything bad pops up, kind of have a um, little bit of leftover spending. So you can estimate another 1,000 if there's some random repair needed or your car breaks down and things like that. From there, you can add in your loan. If you have student loans, maybe you have to pay $300 a month. That generally won't change. But again, maybe at the end of the month, end of the year, you know you're gonna wanna spend a lot more just to kind of close out the year on a good note. So from loan, you can add below groceries. You can kind of keep this to a budget of, let's call it 250. That's something you can control for the most part. So you can try to keep it as fixed. We have phone, say it's 60 a month. And again, feel free to add in different expense categories as you need. Some people like to have every individual detail, some people like to combine them, but it's really just to get a ballpark range of your spending habits. From there, you can add in vacation. So maybe you have a big trip planned. We're going to Spain in March. It's gonna be $1,500. And then for the rest of the year, it's kind of just not much going on. And then this row I like to call fun. So this is any hobbies you have, if it's painting, if it's golf. You know, kind of depends on how you want to do that, but maybe you have $100 you have per month set up for those types of hobbies. So from there, we have most of our expenses set up. We can again do Alt H6 to indent, and then leave you some buffer space in case you want to add in any other type of expenses. So from there, we have total expenses. Should be an S. And similar to the two sections above, we just want to sum everything up, see where we stand. If you have these blank rows and you probably aren't going to use them, but you want to keep them just in case, you can highlight the rows and then hit Alt Shift right arrow. That'll bring up grouping, which you can close by pressing one and open with pressing two. We can add some coloring as we've done in the above and we're all good with expenses. So at this point we have total income, total investments, and then that last piece, total expenses. The very bottom piece of this budget is your savings. If you've scrolled down a bit and you wanna see the months remain at the top, you can actually delete out this top row. And then if you go into view, freeze panes, and then do freeze top row, as you scroll down, you'll be able to see the months, so. Just another quick tip, but going down to savings, this amount is essentially your income, so your money coming in, minus your investments, minus your other expenses. So after any money has come in, any money has gone out, this is what you have left over to play with. But at this point we have our savings left over by month, and we also have this full year view. So what I like to do is take your savings amount and then divide total income, drag that across, and this will give you, by hitting this percentage amount, this will give you the percentage of your total income that you have left over as savings. You can also kind of just play around with things and maybe add some more buffer if, if you want to add for a miscellaneous line. Maybe you want to just have a buffer of anything that might pop up for $300. So you'll see some savings kind of going into the negative here in December. But for the most part, this is all you really need to have a very basic structured budget. There are also a few cosmetic things I like to do to kind of make the report a little bit more digestible. You can do some more grouping with Alt Shift right arrow and hitting one. And then I like to kind of take these headings and 
just add a lighter shade of blue or whichever colors you prefer. And then lastly, if you go into view and the ribbon and uncheck grid lines, you can get rid of those grid lines separating each cell. If you have trouble kind of understanding the numbers and seeing things through and understanding this forecast or budget, you can also build out different charts by you know selecting the columns and rows that you care about. If you want to look at your savings month to month, you can just highlight those cells, hold down control to click and drag to the next piece you want. And then if you go into insert, click on these 2D columns for instance, you can essentially show a quick chart that kind of shows your savings month to month. So I'll have the personal preference, but you know you kind of see you have big spike in March and then go up and remember you have that bonus coming in, so that's helping to add some money. Or in December, you had some buffer, made a higher student loan payment. Kind of just helps you understand the flow of money. You can you know pretty this up however you want. The goal is really to just get a better understanding of where your money's going, how the months work, and try to anticipate spending before it happens. Things are always gonna pop up that you can't really control, but you should really have a good grip on the things that you can control. We now have a very basic budget built out. Feel free to add in any more details as you need. So thanks for tuning into this video and look forward to more content in the future.